So I was curious, and I think a lot of people are curious, what's the dynamic range of an iPhone? All right, so results. This is Imatest. So what we did is we is we we capture some footage of the chart, and then we take that footage and we analyze it using this like math labs based program that uh, uh, compares how many stops the camera can see, and by stops we mean increasing intensities of light against how noisy that gets, because it is a balancing game between how noisy your image is and how much you can see, and so. If you've never seen a, a dynamic range analysis before, this top number, slope-based DR, that's how many stops total. Base ISO on this camera is ISO 55. At least that's what the Blackmagic app that's is reporting. The, it's the lowest. I don't know. We couldn't figure out what like the base ISO is in terms of what Apple assumes has the most dynamic range, but we might have found something. Yeah, we might have found something. Yeah. The lowest you can set the ISO to in the Blackmagic app is 55. And so if we look here, total stops, 12.2. Now it gets interesting. As we go down, these are different levels of noise, noise tolerance for you. So say you, you, were, you were willing to accept a lot of noise, then that would be the low score here. And if you're willing to accept like no noise, then this high score of 0 0.1, that's, uh, so 10.4, that means 10.4 stops have like no noise, everything else gets a 12.2. Medium is usually what we aim for, which is a single noise ratio of two. If you get a good score there, that's pretty good. This is the number that when we compare cameras, we normally compare this, and maybe the top number to just gauge how many stops the sensor has. Now what's weird about this is that the top four numbers are all 12.2. And I've seen this in the past, and usually what it means is, is that the image is being sort of shifted down in a sense to bury the noise between the, below the noise floor, but you're also sort of putting a soft cap on how many stops you can see total because it's it's sort of doing this whole shift thing. And this is probably by design, thinking that if people are shooting in this range of ISOs, we're gonna get rid of the noise for them and we'll still give them a reasonable amount of dynamic range, but they're not gonna get the whole thing they don't know what to do with it in the first place. That's probably what <laughs> Apple's saying, right? And this, this pattern carried on even as we move up. So this is ISO 100 now, same thing, 12.2, 12.2, 12.2, all the way down. And ISO 200, pretty similar result. This could be that margin of error thing where we're trying to get the shutter speed just yeah. right. Uh, but again, you get all 12s here and then a, 10, a low 10 on the high. And 400, pretty much the same. As we moved from somewhere just before 400, up to 800, we did notice though, that the clipping point increased. Yeah. And what happens is with, with log profiles, this is all in log by the way, yeah, we we shot, yeah, in, what do they call it, it's Apple log or something? Apple log, yeah. yeah. So we shot an Apple log. Log profiles have clipping points and usually they'll tell you in their white papers what they are. Maybe you're shooting uh, S log three and it's like 94% or something. What that means is that you're not getting all the way to 100. At 94 is the clipping point. Anything above 94 is just saturated pure white. And, and that's the curve. And then when you work it into Rec. 709, then you fill your zero to 100 and you have your actual blacks and whites yeah. and stuff. Uh, the clipping point changed as we increased ISO, which does help to support that those lower ISOs are actually below the native. Yeah. Because on a lot of cameras, say your ISO 800 is native, let's say, you turn it down below 800, you, you do that thing where you push everything down, clipping down. point goes down, shadows get cleaner, whatever. Something similar is noticing here because as we go to ISO 800, now all of a sudden, both medium high and high are different. The angle and where the, it's it's not that different from 400, but it's, it's slight, it's starting, st to, starting change. to change. And then we found that the biggest jump where it was like, okay, now we're doing something different was around 1100. Yeah. And you can just like, look at the graph. It's totally different. It's, and then now the lines over here and all these stops are now being like measured. And everything's completely different. The slope based DR jumps up to 13.6. This is a theory because there's so much going on with the phone pipeline that's hard to control. What we think happened because we used false color and we used zebras and we were able to measure the clipping point that changed with the false color, for instance, it was yellow, Was everything was clipped and yellow, but the legend for false color showed that it went to red. It went to like up to 95% red. Nothing was red. When we got to 1100, then the brightest stops flicked on to red making me think that we now release the soft cap. Exactly. You know, now we're getting all the stops, but you're going to get noise and stuff now, right? And that kicked in again, we were using a sliding. And if you speed. think about it, like even if we weren't shooting log, it kind of makes sense if you were developing this camera for people, if they need to see everything, it's like, okay, they've hit a point where, you know, we can't just keep trying to soften this out for clean cleanliness. Yeah. Let's just give them everything because clearly they're shooting something. They want to see it all. So if it's noisy, so what? They want to get all that information, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if it was a regular like mirrorless camera, this would be a flat stop and we would say, oh, there's your native ISO, exactly. is that whatever. Here, because we were working with that jog wheel, we don't know exactly the number, but it was around 1100 yeah. that it kind of cl clicked in. And 
we can now see a more normal result of what I would, what I would, this is what it would normally look like for me if I was testing a, a different, like a mirrorless camera. Yeah. We see a total 13.6. We're still getting 13.6 on the low, which tells me that maybe there's still a little bit more clipping point ceiling we can yeah. lift up. 13.1 on the medium. So now we're getting noisier, noisier, noisier as we go down. And the medium high is still 12.2, which makes me think that might have been Apple's target. Yeah. Was this amount of noise, this particular noise ratio of the medium high, they're like, let's just make it where if they're shooting below this, we'll just give them medium high, the 12.2, we'll shut the rest of it down, and that's that. If you're willing to shoot at higher ISOs, and we'll talk about reasons to do that, then you can get theoretically up to another stop and a half, um, but you'll have to you know, manage noise and know how to work with that. And then we found another little bit of a jump around, we have his 1480, again, plus or minus. And this one was just that it, the red went a little bit darker red yeah. <laughs> and the zebras tolerated from like 91, 92 up to closer to 95. Yeah. Anything beyond this, we didn't really notice a difference. I think we put it up to 3,000, 4,000, nothing else really changed. Yeah. So this is around, it would make me feel like if there was like a, a native ISO, it might be like a 1250 or something like that, you know, um, where you're going to get the most dynamic, you're going to get all the stops. Yeah. And based on this being 13.8, it makes me feel like it's a 14 stop sensor. Yeah. And to get all 14 stops, you got to be around that, I guess the closest full stop or closest stop would be at like a 1250 or something. You got to be around that 1250 zone. And for the audience, that's a pretty good number. Yeah. Like 14 stops is, is I would say, I don't High know, end. 70% yeah. of mirrorless cameras. Yeah. Some do 15, some do 13, but 14 stops, a lot of Sony, like, because Sony also makes sensors for other cameras. I'm, I'm also fairly convinced it's a Sony sensor in the iPhone. The IMX, whatever, yeah, exactly. whatever they call it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those are 14 stop sensors, right? And then the medium score here of 13.3, we can't say for sure the noise reduction, like what exactly is going on. You always have to, even when we do Sony mirrorless cameras, they have noise reduction. You don't control it. You can't turn it off and measure it on and measure it. There's noise reduction going on. These numbers are always inflated by noise reduction. You basically have to have a cinema camera or like a Lumix camera where you can turn off the noise reduction to see what is my base dynamic range with nothing happening. Yeah. So reduce these by an appropriate amount based on noise reduction, but it's good scores. Good score. The, yeah. the clean, clean, clean number is above 10, totally. which I've seen these go down to seven, eight, nine. That's a good number. Medium high is still sticking around there, the 12.2, 12.3. 13.3, if I was getting that, if I was getting that with low noise reduction on a mirrorless yeah. camera, I'd be singing its praises. Absolutely. You and know? That, that's like an advertised, you know, Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro dynamic. Yeah, they'd be, yeah, they'd yeah. be like, look at us go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we don't know exactly what's going on, but these are good scores. And I feel confident enough in this data being meaningful despite the caveats in measuring it. Yeah. It, it just suggests that this is, if you're trying to shoot a movie with this or whatever, this is probably what you want to be looking. If you want to unlock all your dynamic range and you're familiar with noise, you want you're willing to work with and stuff. Yeah, you want to aim 11, 12, 1300 ISO, and you're gonna get you're gonna get everything. So let's take a second and talk about shooting high ISO. Yeah, shooting high ISO because I do think that everybody starts out when they start to learn stuff about cameras. They learn well when it's bright out, you turn your ISO down because you want to don't clip your highlights. Yeah. You got to turn down your ISO. And when it's dark, you got to jack that ISO up so you can see in the dark. People oh. always say that, see in the dark, yeah. right? <laughs> you don't want to see in the dark. It's a low light beast. Yeah, you need yeah. lights. That's what you need. If you're shooting a movie, you need lights. Exactly. You know, I'm spitting. I'm so upset I'm spitting. <laughs> Environments are about noise just as much as the camera, if not more. Yeah. Uh, so say you're in a very bright environment, daylight, midday. Everything in that scene is going to be above the noise floor. Yeah. So noise isn't going to be an issue. So then you might as well shoot at a higher ISO capture all the dynamic range, like you said, the sky behind the talent Absolutely, or whatever. Yeah. And then you want to sort of attenuate the amount of light that's hitting your sensor by another means, which would normally be ND and iris. Yeah. Now, you said you cannot control the aperture. No, it's fixed 1.8, depending on the lens. It's either 2.4. Should we mention which one we used? Like yeah, so we shot everything on the 1X, which is the 48 megapixel main sensor. That's, that's supposed sensor. to be the best one. It's the best right? one that's on the on the phone, yeah. But in that case, it's a 1.8 always. Yeah. With this, it's going to be either ND or shutter speed, right? Now, shutter speed, if you jack up the shutter speed to darken the image, you're going to have to, again, deal with motion blur, but now in the other direction, where you're not going to have any trails, and it's going to be kind of sharp and Robotic frenetic. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so ND. ND is the answer. Historically, so, I've never I've never put an ND on a phone, so yeah, take, yeah. take so, away. Yeah, no, there's <laughs> cases, there's, there's clips that you can buy on Amazon and stuff. I think Moment... Uh, makes a bunch of stuff that you can just sort of screw on a, a variable ND onto your phone, and that's how you would control that exposure yeah. to compensate 
a high ISO in a brightly lit environment. Right. So you'd put it on, you say you'd put on your fixed 1250 ISO or whatever. You're like, this is my most stops, according to Gerald and yeah. Patrick's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you like, I want to hit that 1250 ISO, I'm dial that in. Yeah. And now I'm using ND to make the shot look the exposure I want it to look. And now I'm getting all my dynamic range. Totally. Now when the opposite is happening, and you have some experience doing this recently, if you're shooting in a, in a gloomier, moodier, now you've got stuff that's below the noise floor, ideally, you want to turn your lights on, you know, and like that's that's the answer there. And, yeah. and it doesn't mean that you're losing the mood. Think of it this way. A contrast ratio can exist regardless of whether everything is bright or not. If one side of my face is X brightness and the other yeah. side of my face is one half X brightness, I can make this twice as bright This is and this twice as bright and they'll still be the same ratio. And then in post, you just make it as moody as you want. Bring it down after, yeah. So more lights means above the noise. Or you open up your iris and you let more light in. Again, that's not an option. No. Or you slow your shutter speed. You can get motion blur, right? So <laughs> so yeah, in low light, the best, the best thing you can do is get that ISO low, right? Yeah. So get as low as you possibly can for that noise floor to be clean. And I've noticed, even if you're not using the Black Magic app. You got a grip on that titanium? It's, or it's <laughs> slippery tight. <laughs> A slippery tight <laughs> um, I've noticed even if you don't want to use a third party app and if you're just shooting with the iOS app, they give you an EV comp. So you get plus two right. or minus two. And if you're in low light, even in an environment like this, I'd probably get it down to like minus 1.7, if not pushing minus two, because it forces the phone to drop that ISO and you just get a much cleaner image. If you got to bring it up a little bit, it's a much cleaner image to work with. And then if you can lock it off at that, then you could be looking at that and then you could start cooking your lights on and, and like get it the way you want. No, yeah. I've, got, I've got my noise down. Let's let's get some lights get moving cool. around yeah. and make it work. So that's just that's just that works for all. That's just a phone advice. That's all cameras. Yeah. Photographers that shoot raw stills knew this stuff years ago. You know the first ones to, to try to camera myths. You yeah. know, but <laughs> filmmaker IQ made a great video on this yeah. too. If you want to know more, where it's just basically like, look, sometimes you got to jack that ISO up, even when you're shooting in a bright environment to get more stops and your highlights or whatever, right? Totally. And it seems like, again, all the caveats we mentioned, but around. 1100 to 1400 is where you're going to unlock that 14 stops of the sensor. And the score is pretty good, Patrick. It's, good. it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> How did we get there? It went from <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo music video to, to eventually Henry, Henry Ford, Ford. <laughs> inventing the Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you end up. That's how you end up. <laughs>